for a look at the National Papers. We're joined by the plain English editor, Andrew Pegler. Andrew, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. This morning it seems that uh, we're almost on par with the Americans. Well, the parody party could be kicking off. Um, break out the champagne and cigars. Not quite yet, but uh, according to a rather hawkish speech from uh, Glenn Stevens, uh, there is a scenario painted that the dollar could go to a dollar ten. Um, and it, in fact, after his announcement, the dollar then jumped. Uh, he also mentioned in his speech the word uh, the Reserve Bank would not be, quote, too timid unquote, when it comes to raising interest rates further. And we know, of course, reading between the lines uh, for uh, uh, Reserve Bank Governor language, that's almost a very loud call to action that, uh, in fact, interest rates are going to ratchet up over yeah, the next little some while. Some economists are now tipping a half a percent rise um, next heard, month. I heard this, Joe. Yeah. Hey. 50 basis points Shock in one hit. Shocking. It's a, it's a huge <laughs> hit. I also read something to the effect of uh, there is a possibility there'll be seven rate rises over the next seven meetings, taking the interest rate to around about 5% in May. And this is all because the economy is improving, but it's um, not necessarily a, a cause for people to start jumping around celebrating. Not yet. Not, not, not absolutely. And at a political level, of course, it's dividing a little bit the Reserve Bank and the government. The Reserve, Reserve Bank is pretty keen on them to wind back the stimulus, and Wayne Swan is, of course, keen to sort of talk down the possibilities of that. I mean, and this is all for political reasons. Ultimately, how that will play out is just something up to time. And this is just one of the, the latest of articles that actually is kind of a forensic tea leaf reading that is happening now with us every day on the economy. We, we me measure every single strength of verb that Glenn Stevens has, yeah. that, that <laughs> Wayne Swan, his syntax, what might that mean? Yeah, yeah. How did his eye move when he said the word timid and, and whether or not he drank his tea or didn't finish his tea? All of these things are very important. Actually, speaking of words, I thought either, I think Glenn Stevens is either beyond a maths man and a bit of a words man, which I think he might be, but whacking the word emergency before the whole rate rise situation was a stroke of genius because, of course, it gives him an out at any point. We have an emergency and every emergency needs a hero and that hero is Glenn. And keeping on finance, um, the hero for consumers uh, in yesterday and today, the NAB. It is. Now, <clears throat> it's an unusual move by one of the big fours to, I don't know, be a bit nice, I guess. Now, what they've done is uh, they have abolished fees for two of their most popular accounts. Uh, which and, then, and this is some fees, not all fees. Not all. Yeah. Not all. And there are all no but strings... one, I believe. It was just on their premium package. Okay. I think there, no, there's actually also, if you overwithdraw on your credit card account, you mm, used to get whacked three and a half yeah. million dollars for doing so, but they've reduced that to nothing. Well, that's an exaggeration, of course. It was 25 bucks. Anyway, they've reduced that to nothing. Uh, so ne what NAB have done is they've come through, they basically got the, uh, the, the run on the other three banks as being sort of... Uh, reacting against the, the overwhelming public um, distaste with the fee situation. They've taken the fees off uh, their classic and e-banking accounts and the $25 over limit fee for credit cards and late payments of $30 has been reduced to $5. So this is basically something that's <coughs> costing them $130 million or something like that, yeah. but it's essentially a marketing move. It's them saying, it's advertising saying, yeah. hey, we're great. Uh, well, they would have done the maths on this and an advertising campaign had cost X, Y and Z over five years. Uh, it, it seems to be a heading way that uh, banks are going to sort of do something about their fees and now they've taken the jump and good on them, I reckon. Yeah, I'm so surprised they've taken the trouble considering there's the competition has, has decreased pretty substantially over the past couple of years. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Good point. I mean, what can you, what can you say? Now, People magazine got the scoop that everyone would have been waiting yeah, for. They did. They did, yeah. Uh, the, as, as we've covered on the show before, JC Duggard, of course, uh, who was the young girl abducted uh, and who spent 18 years in captivity uh, in the back of the sex offender's yard in the US, uh, has released first photos of herself as an adult and her first statement through People magazine in the US, as we said. Uh, she snapped in the magazine uh, in photos with her mother uh, and her sister and her two daughters, which were fathered by the gentleman who... So the children are actually photographed? That they're, they're in the photos, but you do not see their faces, mm. which is good. Obviously, good move. Sorry, Joe. And, and apparently, they're as well educated, her, her children, as um, other children have been, despite the fact that they've never been to school, but had been um, taught by J.C. Lee Dugard. 
and um, apparently well, she was abducted, abducted at the age of nine eleven. or uh, yeah, eleven or something like that, and was able to educate them wow. in that process. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's that's well, that's that's an ad for I guess home teaching, which is something that is happening. <laughs> hardly, I mean, uh, but, but well, yes, I guess you're right. Hardly, but uh, there's also a shot of her on a horse, which apparently she rides for therapy, which is a good thing. And I gather, look, she's adapting slowly but surely. But mm. I mean, this is the words. The words escape one when it, it comes to this story. It, it, yes, exactly. I mean, you would look at this magazine, most uh, readers would buy it, obviously through curio curiosity, but also with a measure of uh, relief that they've heard this hor horrendously yeah. Yeah. Uh, traumatic story and seeing this smiling, <coughs> so, such a normal happy face on top of a magazine. That's, yeah. that's surely what people have been wanting to see. But of course, um, looks are deceptive, you know. Uh, yes. You can, you can Put the makeup on, do the hair, take the shot, but the indiv individual has to walk away and live inside their own head. As your last story indicates. Yeah. <laughs> looks it are does. definitely ah, deceptive yes, here. Yes. Well, looks are definitely deceptive. Uh, a, a former Ralph Lauren model, if we can get that shot up, uh, a former Ralph Lauren model uh, uh, his, uh, whose image in a roundly criticised advertisement was digitally slenderised. <laughs> Uh, as we can see, uh, that's the, the age has used slenderized. They have, they have, and I think that's a word. Uh, Don Watson might be interested in that word. Uh, well, that word is not as mangled as that image because that image on the left that we just yeah. saw there is one of the most bizarre. So, so what's the thrust images. of the what's the thrust of the story? It's weirdo land. This one. She's come on, had the shot. Ralph Lauren have felt that she's a little bit too big for their clothing, so they've slenderized the shot and in fact while they, they they've, I guess they've over slenderized because in fact her hips are broader than her head and she looks more like an alien than a model the poor dear and so she's come out and uh, she's been sacked and she's come out and said look listen that's not me I was slenderized and I'm not very happy about it hopefully that might meet the end of those sort of uh, uh, manipulations uh, let's hope so I don't think so no. <laughs> Andrew Fegler thank you very much for joining us thank you guys bye now, with sport, here is Paul Kennedy.